Hi, I'm Ms. Fung. Let's have a look at anti-differentiation of polynomial functions. Previously, we had a look at differentiation, and that is the process of having a function and then finding its gradient. So the reverse of that is called anti-differentiation and it is when you have a gradient and you're looking for its function. So when you anti-differentiate a gradient, you obtain the function. So let's have a look at some patterns. Previously, when we differentiate, we can see that we go from x cubed into 3x squared. So how does the reverse or anti-differentiation work? Let's try to look for a pattern as well. Now, recall that differentiating means we brought the 3 down into the numerator and then we subtracted 1 from its power. So we're going to do the inverse of that. So we're going to add to the power and then we divide instead of multiply by its power. So does that work? Let's see, 2 plus 1 gives us 3 and then dividing by 3, 3 over 3 gives us 1. So yes, it does give us the x cubed that we were looking for. So with anti-differentiation, we can add to the power and divide by a new power. Let's check. Add three, 1 to the 3, we obtain 4. And dividing by the new power, we obtain x to the power 4, which is what we were looking for. However, there are scenarios where we differentiate and we obtain the same uh, derivative. So if we had 3x squared as our initial um, uh, f dash x, how do we know which of the f of x does it become? So if we started with 3x squared, how do you know that it came from x cubed minus 5 or x cubed plus 5 or x cubed plus 0? Well, we don't. So when we anti-differentiate, we don't just add 1 to the power and divide by the new power. We also have to add c or in other words, add a constant because we don't know what the constant is. To differentiate is to find a ddx of the function and to anti-differentiate we use that symbol over there. Now if the derivative is f dash x, the derivative of f of x, sorry, if the derivative of f of x is f dash x, then the anti-derivative of f of x is capital F x. So anti-differentiation is when you um, do the uh, is when you find capital F of x and you do that by adding 1 to the power and dividing by the new power and then you, you add c because we don't know what the constant is it could be 0, it could be a value and n can obviously not be equal to negative 1 otherwise the denominator would be 0 so just like derivatives we can add when we anti-differentiate we can subtract and we can multiply by a constant where k is the constant so let's try some examples. If you already know this, you can pause the video and unpause and give it a go. But otherwise, follow along and especially look at the way we use the notation. Example 1, we have dy dx and now we're looking for y. So we find the antiderivative, we find the antiderivative of dy dx by putting that symbol there. And to the right, we do the same thing. So notice that I haven't changed it yet because we this is the, the, what we're, the process we're doing. So once we get rid of that, then I've done it to the function. So x to the 4, add 1 becomes x to the 5, divide by the new power, which is 5. The 3, well, there's x to the 0 there. When there's no x, it means x to the 0, because x to the 0 is 1. So x to the 0, add 1 becomes x to the power of 1, divided by 1 is just still 3, so 3x. And we don't know what the c is. So recap the notation, see we put the antiderivative of that becomes that. We don't have that symbol there anymore. So same thing with this one to find the antiderivative of that. But first of all, we don't uh, antiderive it yet. We have to expand. So expanding, we obtain x times x squared is x cubed. And then x times 6 is 6x. Now we're ready to antiderive. We get rid of the symbol. So x cubed becomes 3 plus 1 is 4 divided by 4. And then this is x to the 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, divided by 2, 6 divided by 2 is 3. And don't forget the plus c. dy dx, so the same kind of format. This time I'm going to skip that bit, I'm just going to get to y. 
So x2 plus 1 is 3, dividing by the new power, 3 over 3 is just 1. Now x to the 1 plus 1 is 2, divided by 2 we get minus 1. And then x to the 0 becomes just x. So again the pattern is when you see a number, a constant, sorry the 3 and the 1 there, it just you just add the x next to it. When you see um, any other um, x, make sure you add 1 to the power and divide by that value. So here we have the derivative f dash x. So the antiderivative would be f of x. So you ask yourself where, when you derive, you get that, then what was the thing that you derived? So x to the 5 means add 1 becomes x to the 6. 2 divided by 6 becomes 1 third x to the 2 add 1 becomes x to the power of 3, 3 fifth divided by 3 becomes 1 over 5. And then x1 plus 1 becomes x squared, 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we have, or minus 3 because there's a minus there. And don't forget the plus c. Well how do we anti-derive this? Well first of all we have to expand. So we have 2x all squared becomes 4x squared, 2x times 3 times 2 is 12x and 3 squared is 9. Now we can antiderive it so it becomes the capital of f of x. Now x squared plus 1 is x cubed divided by 3. Don't lose the 4. Then now x to the power of 1 plus 1 is x squared. Dividing by the 2 we have 6x squared. And then the, when there's a constant we just plug in x from the pattern. And don't forget the plus c. Notice that the plus c is in the antiderivative and not in the equation over there. Be very careful. Um, here we have f of x again. Again we can expand first. So 3x times 5x is 15x squared. 3x times minus 2 is minus 6x. Now we antiderive it. So writing the capital f of x we have power of 2 means add 1 is 3. Dividing by 3, 15 minus, divided by 3 is 5. And then minus 6x to the power of 1 becomes x to the power of 2 divided by 2 becomes minus 3x squared. And don't forget the c. So what is the um, notation? So if the original equation is f of x, we can write the um, notation like so. Or we can also write capital F of x. If the original equation was y, then the antiderivative would look like that. And if the original equation was f dash x, then the antiderivative would be its original function plus c. We can also use the CAS calculator. So in main, you type the expression and then interactive and you find that symbol over there. Um, I can pull out a CAS for you to have a look. And let's do that. So let's try it on the calculator. Let's say we have x to the power of 5. We go action, calculation, and we hit that symbol over there. But before I hit it, let's see what we expect to obtain. x to the 5, and to derive it, we have x to the power of 5 plus 1 is 6, and then over 6. So if I hit that, I highlight, drop, hit enter, and we have that. So if I use standard, sorry we have x to the power 6 over 6. So you can see that you can use the CAS and it's pretty quick. Example 7. It is known that f dash x equals x cubed plus 4x squared and f of 0 equals 0. Find f of x. So we have the derivative. How do we find the uh, original function? We antiderive it. So we have uh, and to differentiate that we obtain x to the 3 becomes x to the 4 divided by 4 and then x squared becomes x to the power of 3 divided by 3 don't lose it 4 and then don't forget your plus c now you will see why this is now useful so f of 0 is sorry x when x is 0 f of x is 0 so we can write that as 0 and 0 and that's equal to 0. So c is also equal to 0. So now this statement here, we can write it out again without the c. So notice the notation as well. We had the derivative. So when we anti-derive it, we obtain its original function. Example 8. 
If the gradient of the tangent at a point x is y on a curve is given by 5x and the curve passes through 0, 6, find the equation of the curve. Again, we're given the gradient, we're looking for the equation, so we're anti-deriving again. And we have some points. So the gradient is 5x, as stated here. So how do we anti-derive it? We add 1 to the power and dividing by that new power. Don't forget your plus C. And we have a point. The curve passes through that. This is the, not the gradient, this is the curve or the function. So it has x0 and 6 is our y. So we plug that in and we can see that that becomes 0. So C is just equal to 6. So that line there now just becomes f of x, 5x squared over 2 and the C is now 6. Example 9, find y in terms of x in each of the following. So we have dy dx and we have a point. So to find y, we anti-derive it. So 2x minus 1 becomes x to the power 2 divided by 2 is the 2 disappears. And then when we have a constant, we just put x there and don't forget the c. Putting the x and y value in, so x is 1, y is 0. We can see that c is equal to 1 minus 1 is 0, c is equal to 0. So that line there, I can write it again without the c. So x squared minus x. Let's try this one and to derive the 3 minus x squared, we have 3x and then x squared becomes x cubed over 3, then plus c. Now plug in the x is 3 and 2 as your y. 3 times 3 is 9 and then we have 3 times 3 times 3, 27 over 3 is also 9. So we have c is equal to c2. Now we can plug that into that line and we have y equals 3x minus x cubed over 3 plus the 2. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!